So is the number of unauthorized immigrants living in the U.S. declining? The short answer is yes, the number of unauthorized immigrants living in the U.S. has dropped to its lowest level in more than a decade. Before we dive in, it's important to know that when we talk about unauthorized immigrants, we mostly mean immigrants who either cross the border without permission or violate the terms of their admission by staying past their visa expiration date or using false documents. Now on to the data. The Pew Research Center latest estimate shows that there were a total of 10.5 million unauthorized immigrants living in the U.S. in 2017. That number is down by 1.7 million or about 15% from its peak in 2007. You're probably wondering how we arrive at this estimate and what else we're able to learn from this number. To get us started, here's senior demographer Jeff Passell, who's been our lead researcher responsible for this estimate since 2005. At the Pew Research Center, we use official government data sources to estimate how many people can be categorized as unauthorized immigrants. First, we use U.S. Census Bureau data, like the 3.5 million household American Community Survey, to determine the total number of immigrants living in the country in a specific year. Then, we calculate how many legal immigrants live in the United States using government data on the number of legally admitted immigrants, refugees, and people granted asylum. We update the estimate of legal immigrants with data on death rates in the U.S. and migrants leaving the country. Next, this number of legal immigrants gets subtracted from the total immigrants in the country to arrive at our initial estimate of how many unauthorized immigrants live in the U.S. in a given year. But we don't stop there. Based on experience and research, we know census data and other surveys tend to miss some people. So we use sources like the Census Bureau's studies of undercounts and Mexican government data to further verify and adjust our estimate. Only then are we confident that our number is as accurate as possible. Thanks, Jeff. So, once we determine an estimate, what's next? Well, we're then able to discover key trends and characteristics of the unauthorized immigrant population. For example, Mexicans have long made up the largest share of unauthorized immigrants, and they still do. But the number of Mexicans living in the U.S. without authorization has been falling since 2007. And this is a part of a wider trend in which we've seen a large drop in the number of new unauthorized immigrants, not just from Mexico, but in general. With fewer new unauthorized immigrants, we find that those who are in the country are more and more likely to have lived in the U.S. for a long time. For example, we estimate that about two-thirds of adults have lived in the country for more than 10 years. While the number of Mexicans entering the U.S. has gone down, the U.S.-Mexico border remains a pathway for entry by growing numbers of unauthorized immigrants from El Salvador, Guatemala, and Honduras. In our latest estimate, Central America was the only region besides Asia accounting for more U.S. unauthorized immigrants than in 2007. As you can see, counting the number of unauthorized immigrants within the country presents some challenges. But it's incredibly important to carefully weigh multiple sources of reliable data to develop and verify the final estimate. Doing so produces more than a single number. It provides a look at who is centering and staying in the U.S., enriching the public dialogue and supporting sound decision-making. 